Washington, the capital of tailgaters, Manhattan, the Little Apple, as K-State entertains rival the Kansas Jayhawks. Welcome to College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosara. Today, the 105th edition of the Battle for the Sunflower State, the Kansas Jayhawks unbeaten after four, and the Wildcats of Kansas State in the red three and one. Welcome, everyone. Bill Land, along with Gary Reason, something's got to give here today. Folks are wondering just how good is this Kansas team after running roughshod through its non-conference schedule. Well, Gary, I don't know how good they are, but with the numbers they put up offensively, regardless of the competition, it is impressive. I tell you, Mark Mangino has to say one thing. Execution is the name of the game, and they have executed offensively, no doubt about it. They've got it done rushing the football, passing the football, and also scoring over 50 points a football game. When you can execute like this, you can win football games, and only to do it again today against K-State. Conference opener for the Jayhawks. Meanwhile, K-State, they are road tested and took care of Texas last week in Austin in convincing fashion. They jumped into the rankings. They score in a variety of ways. I tell you, when you can score in different face of the football game, especially defensively, you're going to be able to set yourself up for success. But what Case did, did last week against Texas, they did a lot of that. You have Murphy here returning for a touchdown, and also we're going to have a kick return for by Jordy Nelson in this football game. Gave that, that propelled them to a win. If you can score in different phases of the game, Bill, that's a great formula for success. All right, it's a great matchup today. Kansas State and Kansas, all the seats are sold, 50,000 strong. The Wildcats and the Jayhawks, and it's coming straight up on FSN. The series, the 105th meeting, KU with a big lead. Last year, they won in Lawrence thanks to six K-State turnovers. Herford is the deep man, and Parker will kick it off for the Kansas State Wildcats. Remember, Kansas, number one in the nation in kickoff return. And Herford just watches this one sail out of the end zone. Nicely done by Parker. The wind is blusting today. It'll be a big factor in our football game. Kiyosara brings you the starting lineups as you take a look at Kansas Todd Reesing, the sophomore quarterback from Austin, Texas, who was third in the Big 12 in total offense at 326 per ball game. The rest of that starting unit, they've got some veterans on the offensive line. Rodriguez, a third-year starter, and Sharp and McAnderson, their two running backs, are both in the top 10 in rushing in the Big 12. Well, I'll tell you, Todd Reesing has done a good job with the football. 11, 11 touchdowns, only one interception on the year. That's a good ratio. First and 10 of the 20. They do spread the wealth with this offense. Out of the gun. Plenty of time. And going up field and intercepted from the get-go by the Kansas State Wildcats. Chris Carney comes off with the pick. The senior from Denver, Colorado. How about that to start this game? Well, just as I start talking about Reesing in accurate passing, he throws one up the seam here. This is two deep zone coverage, and you've got a safety right there. He throws it underneath, trying to get it to Tlaib, his big play receiver coming over from the defensive side. But this is a big turnover early in a football game, and momentum, momentum. That's going to be huge in this football game. Kansas State at home, Bill, now with a chance to get points on the board early. Carney, his first pick of the season. And we just showed you that note about last year and the intercept of the turnovers and what a huge factor it was in the Kansas win. Kansas State tried to turn the tables. First to 10 from the 46-yard line of Freeman. Got an offense complete for a first down inside the 35-yard line. And he connects to Daniel Gonzalez and tackled by Akib Talib after a 13-yard game. Kia Sarah provides our starting lineups. There's a flag on the play as well. We'll sort that out for you. But see Freeman, who's off to a great start in his sophomore season and has quickly become a veteran with the games at Auburn and the University of Texas. Jordy Nelson, the last two games have been absolutely unstoppable. He is second in the league in catches per game as well as yards per game. The penalty against the Wildcats, and we'll push it back to the 30 nine-yard line of Kansas State, so nullifies that big game. Murphy wide to the left on a first and 25 now from the 39 for the Wildcats. And out of the backfield, Johnson makes one miss, gets to the 42-yard line, and he's brought down by Joe Mortensen.
Freeman. One-on-one -on -one coverage there. Nelson, watch out. 30. He's gone. Touchdown, Kansas State. He beat Tlaib. 68 yards. What an outstanding throw by Josh Freeman. Puts the ball out there. Going against number three, he could keep Tlaib at the top of the screen. One of the best cornerbacks in the Big 12. And Jordy Nelson, he's got some wheels, Bill. He runs right by Tlaib, has no chance to catch him. 4-3 speed, and I tell you what, he plays faster than that. Wow, did he turn on the afterburners after that grab? Nelson, and now for the point after, Brooks Rossman. And Rossman bangs it home. He is now 17 of 18 on the year, and Kansas State, the quick strike, a familiar story here in Manhattan. Welcome back to Manhattan, Kansas, where Bill Snyder Family Stadium is jumping for the Wildcats after that 68-yard TD pass, Freeman to Nelson. And now leading at 7-0 with 8.48 to go in the first quarter, Jordy Nelson. He's thrown for two touchdowns this year. He's caught three touchdown passes, and he's got one TD on a punt return. Yes, scoring in different ways, and Jordy Nelson, what a great story. Came to Kansas State as a walk-on player, became a scholarship player, and having a tremendous senior season. Hey, he's one of the best, best receivers in the Big 12 right now. So Nelson gets a breather as Parker kicks it off. He's got Herford and McAnderson are deep. Both have been very dangerous in the kick return game. Averaging 33 yards a kick for Herford and McAnderson 31 per return. And Herford, a yard deep from the end zone. Up the middle. And nice return out to the 28-yard line. And Byron Garvin makes the tackle for Kansas State. All right, thank you very much. We'll keep you updated college football around the country. Kansas. Throwing it out on the wing, nothing doing. A loss on the play that time as K-State was all over it as Campbell and Walker, you see, getting up from the bottom of the pile. Minus four on the play. Yeah, just swarming defense by the Cats that time. A lot of them, a lot of purple shirts at the point of the point of the play here. You take a look at it from quarterback's perspective. He's saying, oh, no, I see a bunch of purple shirts going after my receiver. That's not a good thing for Dexton Fields. And second and eight after that two-yard pickup. And Reesing, the quarterback, Meyer, now moves into the slot as a receiver. So he has caught a couple passes this year. He's run it eight times. Reesing will keep on an option play. And he won't either. And Gary Meyer was the option back coming across there. He was the guy that he, he was going to go around the edge and pitch the football to. Would have been to Gary Meyer. And you know, we talked to the Kansas coaching staff about Gary Meyer. And, you see him coming across the screen, and he's the guy coming out here. They want to put him in the football game and give an opportunity for him to get his hands on the ball field simply because of one thing. He's one of the best athletes on the team. He's one of the top, the fastest guys out there. So they feel like he's in the top five speed players on that football team. So put playmakers on the field. Started eight games last year for the Jayhawks as a freshman, and then got beat out by Reesing in the spring. So it's third and six. Crowd roaring. Reesing in trouble. Dumps it. Incomplete. He was smothered. Childs and company leading the way. Eric Childs, number 90, 6'3", 227. You see Ian Campbell there. Campbell's already had 11 and a half sacks last year. A little blitz here by the defense. Tim Tibizar deciding to go ahead and blitz him on third and short. They're trying to set up a screen play there. That's why you see the receiver, Jake Sharp there, the tailback, trying to turn to look for the football. So almost a huge sack there, but Good job by the quarterback, at least getting rid of the football. So Tucker comes on to punt it again, and he's averaged 32 yards on his three punts. Murphy will stay away from this one as it bounces out of bounds. A great field position this time for the Wildcats with 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter. They'll get it about the 48-yard line after a 28-yard kick. Well, they've had great field position because the wind has been at their back. Kansas has been punting the football into the wind, Bill. But now Kansas State, they've got to be able to convert here. I think it's imperative for them to move the ball with the wind in this football game from the south to the north. And see some clouds moving in here as well. It might be a chance of rain here. I'm not sure if it's going to be or not. But We had a chance to visit with Ron Prince and asked him about the keys to beating this uh, KU uh, ball club. 
I think for us, it's always going to be in the kicking game. I don't think there's ever going to come a time where a place like Kansas State or Virginia Tech and schools like this are ever going to be able to, to go win without being really good in the kicking game and good on defense. Well, offensively, they've been too bad. This one is complete to Gonzalez as Freeman under pressure gets about, what are they going to call that, 11 on the pickup? We'll see they spot it at the 40 one yard line you know and Ron Prince about him his, his methodology of what he's coaching how he's teaching not just offense and defense for him special teams are key you see the catch there by Gonzalez and looks like uh, and a call where it hits the ground incomplete but uh, he really preaches special teams that's the first thing they do in practice every week and every day is, uh, is that and catch the football yeah they're giving the completion and and wait a minute they're going to have this play under review so they're going to check on that reception as to whether or not your eagle eye may have caught that uh, right along with the replay officials. So we'll take a brief break and we'll come right back because that's the final play of the first quarter as well. University, the end of the first quarter and there was a play under review on the catch by Gonzalez and it was ruled on the field as a good catch and the replay shows that that stands. So Kansas State will have a first down when we start the second quarter. Begin first and 10 to 41 as they go into the win now, the Wildcats do. And this one slightly overthrown to Nelson by Josh Freeman. Harris was covering for Kansas. Well, they've got good field position now inside of KU territory at the 41 yard line. So they've got to come away here with points, Bill. I mean, they've had opportunities with the win, now going against the win, going to the south now. So Josh Freeman's got to be more accurate with the football. He can't overthrow receivers and leave opportunities out there on the field. Second and 10 for Kansas State at the 41. Leading 7 0. Pushki, the man in motion there. The handoff to Johnson, right up the middle. Flag thrown as he is brought down near the 29 yard line. Joe Mortensen, the tackler. And the back judge throws a flag in for about 25 yards deep, right in the middle of the field, and he's going to call a hold inside. So this play is going to come back for Kansas State. 12 yard pickup will be nullified. And Number 85. Penalties, penalties are a concern. They've averaged 11 penalties a game for 105 yards. Last week, I think they only had two. Yeah, well, Mastru does a good job of blocking there. I don't know that that's a hole. That's who they called it on. That's a pretty good block. You just get up under the shoulder pads and take them down. That's what you want a tight end to do, come inside there and make that play. And I know that's a tough call for Ron Prince and his football team. Every time they've had an opportunity, they've come with a big penalty right against them at the start of the drive. Yeah, they become killers, and you only get so many opportunities. got to be thinking. Pat, oh, my. He is met hard by the defender, Mortensen. And is stopped in his tracks at the 45. Yeah, Joe Mortensen, he's a pretty salty uh, linebacker, smart, gets outside, gets out there quickly, and you see what he's done. Behind the line of scrimmage, pretty impressive this year, and that's going to add to his numbers. So good job by KU taking advantage of the, the penalty, and now Mortensen making a tackle for loss. So it's third and 24 now for Kansas State on their first possession of the second quarter. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones with you. Glad to have you with us on Kiosera's College Football Saturday from Manhattan, Kansas. Wildcats with a 7-0 lead. Here is Freeman. Across the middle, got Nelson. Well covered, though, and pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Chris Harris is there for the Jayhawks. You know, when Jordy Nelson, he's 6'3", 220 pounds, Bill, you know, he's not an easy guy to get down either. You know, these defensive backs, a lot of them are smaller than him, and you can take him for a ride. And you can just see the size difference between him and the Kansas defensive backs right there with Tlaib. And, He's a big guy. Rayer will punt it away. He's his own 41. Raymond Pendleton, the 5'10 sophomore from Garland, Texas, deep for Kansas, the lone return man. This one into that win. He comes up, makes the catch at the 14-yard line, and that's where Kansas will take over. We'll see how the Jayhawks do with the wind behind them here in the second quarter. They trail 7-0. Here's a look around Kansas State's campus with Honda on campus. And yeah, look closely there, I'll tell you what, they know how to uh, grease the announcers, don't they, as they welcome us to Aggieville. It is a great setup, and uh, nothing like uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, the tailgating out here in the Little Apple. They love their Wildcats, and they should. 
They are three and one with a big win over Texas last week, and they lead their rival Jayhawks here seven nothing with 13:33 to go, second quarter. Risco and Fields go wide to the right for the Jayhawks. Henry to the left for quarterback Todd Reese on a third and four. They get the play signaled in. Reese steps up and keeps it. Got a little room to roam and then tackled from behind, but got the first down as he is brought down at the 30 yard line. So Reesing picks up 10. Yeah, Todd Reesing's not a very big guy, Bills. 5'10, 5'11. Sees the lane right ahead and he takes it. Bingo, right there. Good job by him seeing the opening and not throwing the ball out there, but making the first down with his feet. Fields and Henry stacked to the right side as receivers on a second and 10 from the Kansas 30. Reesing looking left and coming that way and complete for a first down. That's run nicely to Fine. Derek Fine, a senior from Salisaw, Oklahoma. Yeah. 16 grabs coming in. He picks up 17 yards here. Gary. Good execution by the offense. Fine runs a little flag route behind the cornerback in front of the safety on the left side here. He's going to see two deep zone coverage and gets the ball right out there. Nice threading of the football by Reesing and Fine is a, is a capable receiver. They need to get the ball in his hands a lot today. 28 receptions last year, 355 yards and five TDs. A senior now, and it's first and 10 at the 47. KU trying to get something going here after a tough first quarter. They just crossed midfield on that carry as Moses Manu makes the stop for the Wildcats. You know, Reesing for the third and three. And we confirm the play, and Reesing takes a snap. Good protection, got a man, and it's complete once again as Henry, the receiver, and he rambles to inside the 35 of Kansas State before McKinney brings him down on a 13-yard pickup for Marcus Henry, the senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, you see the execution now that Kansas has had all season long, early in the season, four wins and big numbers and big receivers, too. Marcus Henry, just a, a guy who's a tremendous target out there, 6'4", huge guy that he can get the ball to. They've thrown to him several times today. That was a nice play. I like the Jayhawks needed a quarter to catch their breath, get up to game speed that K-State offers that they hadn't seen in their four non-conference games. Now they got a little rhythm. Here is Sharp. Nice juke. 25, 20. As Sharp is met by Marcus Watts on the tackle. And Urker also there. Andrew Urker. And a 14-yard game. Well, nice wheels that time by Sharp showing what he is. A little counterplay. Fake it one way, get the momentum into the defense going. He just outruns the linebacker here. Does a good job of getting around the edge and gets a big first down here for Kansas. They're rolling, got some run plays working, a little short passing game working, and you get that balance that you want for your offense. So KU knocking on the door, first to 10 at the 20-yard line. Fine sets up on the left now. Again, recent checking the signals from the sideline. off to Sharp. Found a seam, breaks through, he'll score! Touchdown Jayhawks! What a run by Sharp! They never got him down. Well, he just kept trucking. Nobody put their hands on him to make the tackle, and Sharp said, hey, I'm just going to keep churning and see what happens. And guess what? When he comes out of the hole, nobody's in front of him. He just takes it to the end zone. Good job of continuing the play here. Good blocking up front. They've got their second group of defensive linemen in the line for, for K-State. They roll a lot of guys there. Nobody touched him. Nobody made the tackle. 20 yards on the TD run for Jake Sharp, his fourth score of the year on the ground. And Scott Webb, a senior kicker and a dandy, boots it through to tie it up in the Sunflower Showdown. It is 7-7 with 9-11 to go first half here in Manhattan. Thank you, Mike. Look forward to that. 9-11 to go before halftime here with Kansas evening it up. Seven apiece and Scott Webb to kick it off. Patton and Johnson are the deep men for the Wildcats. Webb's got that big breeze at his back and has no problem putting it all the way out of the end zone. Ten care or ten play, 86-yard drive, and they did just pretty much say, here it is, try and stop it, Gary. Yeah, they mixed it up pretty well. The offensive line for KU did a good job of blocking, and K-State did not get off the blocks. Very apparent there in that drive that... Uh, Okay, you've got some momentum on their side. Johnson goes in motion here. Freeman out of the shotgun for the Wildcats. First and 10 from the 20. Low snap. Puts it out to Johnson. Breaks one tackle and then falls forward. 
just shy of the 30. They're going to mark it down at the 28 yard line. The recipe makes the stop an eight yard game. And both these teams have weapons at the receiver spot, Bill. You can throw it out there to, to Wilson and Johnson, and these guys getting out of the backfield. Big Jordy Nelson in the mix, and they have a lot of weapons that they can throw to. And Josh Freeman, he's a guy that doesn't have to win a football game by himself. Just distribute to, uh, to your playmakers. So Freeman will have a second and two call coming up. The 28-yard line. Fake to Patton, rolls out. Still finds Johnson. Johnson cuts it back and makes it across the 40. That'll move the chains, and he's out to the 42-yard line before McClinton tackles him after a 14-yard pickup. And pretty good speed that time by the quarterback, and he just shows you when he's out of the pocket, he's not easy to tackle. He knows he's going to get contact. You watch him just stand up and make the throw, even though he's got guys around his waist and get the ball outside of Johnson. Confident you know, presence out there by the quarterback and making something happen with his feet on the bootleg. Ron Prince says this is the best team we play. Yeah, and that's yeah, counting Auburn and Can or in Texas. And he said, no, I'm not trying to feed you a line. He goes, they have no holes. Coming after Freeman here. Complete and nicely done by Jordy Nelson. Wow. Hanging on the sideline. First down, Wildcats. Stucky covering. Is this young man amazing or what? Woo. Jordy Nelson has really just done a great job for Kansas State all season long. And just walking the tightrope on the sideline. First of all, Josh Freeman, good elusiveness, a big receiver, just outrun the defense and throwing it down on the edge with good tightrope action there by Jordy Nelson. Good hands pulling the ball in with feet down on the ground. Second and 11 after that loss of one on that first down play for the Wildcats. Your center is Freeman. Nelson wide left, Murphy to the right. Fakes to Johnson. In pursuit, the KU defense. Looking down field, he got Murphy. And that will be a first down at the 27 yard line of Kansas. Resby, the strong safety covering. Deion Murphy, the junior out of Houston, makes the grab for 17. Now, Deion Murphy's going to be a guy coming across the back of the field here. You see the two different levels of the, of the quarterback has to look at. He's got a receiver on this line, a receiver on this line. And where Josh Green's going to throw the football is right there. So. Good job by the quarterback of recognizing where he can have his outlet to him. Good job of coming back by Murphy to the football. And Murphy out of Coffeyville Community College and the junior college route has been very good to Kansas State over the years. And on Prince says that'll continue to be a staple for us because of just the lack of just pure numbers of players in the state of Kansas. And the Kansas Junior College ranks among the best in the country. This first down reception is complete to the 18 yard line. Mortensen and Wright make the tackle on Mastru, the tight end. Nine yards on the pickup. You talk about the talent level in K-State, you know, finding players here locally in state as junior college players, and they feel like that's, that's something that's going to have to continue to build, that they're going to have to use players because, you know, you got two pro, uh, Division I programs in this state. This is a very small state, not a huge population, two Division I programs. Now second and one at the six-yard line. Patton pushing, pushing. And he's in! Touchdown, Kansas State! Six yards on the score. Nice answer drive by Kansas State coming back after Kansas went the length of the field on an 85-yard drive. And they've done a good job of pounding the football on this series as well, showing that they're a big, strong, powerful team as well. So K-State just showing a little muscle at home. So Patton with a TD run. And Rossman to come on. Watts is the holder. Rossman looking for the PAT with a 13-7. And he puts this one through. It is now 14-7. Leon Patton, sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, White High School, gets the TD, his second of the year on the ground. All right, we're set for the kickoff now as Parker will boot it off for Kansas State. The deepest of the return men is Herford. This one, low kick, and Herford bounced nearly over his head. Got it to 15. Looking for a seam. And out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Justin McKinney making the defensive play. K-State crowd is warm. Sold out at 50,000 today here in Manhattan. Reese across the middle, and it's complete to Briscoe. 40. 
45, and Briscoe will have a first down at the 46-yard line. Gary Chandler, a junior from Wichita, Kansas, tackles him after a 14-yard game. Well, you're playing zone defense here, and this is going to be open all day long. Throwing the ball underneath here. You got one linebacker rushing inside. Actually doing a little pressure here on the quarterback, and nobody covered him close. So Briscoe's got a good alley to run through. First to 10 at the 46 for Reesing and Company of Kansas. Wide open is Briscoe and turns and did he stay in bounds? I think he did to get another first down as Chris Patterson was there. He was wide open that time. Yeah, plenty of time to go. Still have 229 on the clock here in the first half. Offense coming alive here for Kansas and you see how the execution has been for them this season. The ball out down to Briscoe again. So. Quarterback Todd Reeson really sharpening up from, from his early, kind of a shaky start, I thought. 43 seconds to go, first and 10. They're at the 32. Do your math, talking like a 49-yard field goal attempt now. Hey, I don't think the long field goal is a problem. Yeah, I would agree there. Here is Reeson. Got it complete. McAnderson broke a tackle, the 15. Did he stay in bounds? No. Stepped out at the nine-yard line. Brandon McAnderson. Just his second reception of the season. He has been doing it on the ground for the most part. This got, timer is a receiver for 23 yards. Yeah, Reese, he makes something happen. See the missed tackle there, Walker, and then you got uh, Hula coming over, knocking him out of bounds. Good effort there to get him on the sideline. He just stepped down right there. You can see that. So good job by the officials of Kansas now with a chance inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, they're thinking six now, not three. 25 seconds to go. First and goal from the nine. Remember, Kansas has one timeout remaining. Reese looking, got a man short. It's McAnderson, and he is tackled at the five, and they'll use their timeout. So they're out of timeouts. He's got it right in the middle of the field. Basically an extra point attempt here. You see the offensive line here working. They're doing a pretty good job of protecting the quarterback. You see Reese, he can step up. He's kind of got half the feet back there. He's had some contact early in the game, but. Right now, the KU line is doing a good job of holding out the Wildcats, and he's found Nick Anderson for a couple of, couple of throws here. All right, second and goal. So you got one play, right, to go to the end zone or nothing? Well, actually, you would be able to run one and get back real quick and stop the clock, and then you could still go well, out with down. Yeah, that's right. It'll be interesting to see if K-State can turn back the Kansas offense. They haven't done it the last couple of drives. KU in the red zone this year coming in 18 of 20 with 13 touchdowns and five field goals. Tlaib is in the lineup. He is in the slot on the left side as a receiver. Reese. Tlaib wide open. Touchdown, Kansas. Akeem Tlaib gets his fourth touchdown of the year. Well, we knew he'd be a weapon, and when needed most, they did not have him covered. Now, just out there on the outside, and I'm surprised that somebody's not closer to a key to leave. You got to have a key when he's in the football game, and this is not. This is he's right there in the middle of the field screen. Will Watchmere's just play develops. He's going to come to the outside, and he just has a flare route. Just flares out of the backfield, and Reesing throws it out there to him. Nobody covers him from the, the Wildcats. That's a missed assignment for sure. So 11 seconds on the clock. Webb hits the point after, and Kansas has tied this one up at 14-14 at the break as Mark Mangino's got to be pleased. His club has come back to tie it up. Let's send it down to Emily Jones with Kansas State coach Ron Prince. Coach Prince, your team is winning the turnover battle 2-1, to one, but they've got the points off of it. How do you change that in the second half? Well, I think we've only had one offensive drive the entire half. The rest of it's been penalties and just really bad play, and we really haven't been able to protect our defense at all. They had a good first quarter. When the wind direction changed, we really didn't adjust. And uh, so we'll have to make adjustments in all those areas in the second half. How do you get the momentum back on your side? And can I ask you, don't know if you'll tell me, but will you take the wind or the ball in the second? I probably won't tell you, but if we get the <laughs> ball, that's one good way to do it. All right. Thanks, Coach. We do appreciate it. I had to try. I had to try. All right. We'll send it back to L.A. now. Mike Goldberg and DeMarco Farr. Guys, I tried. Welcome back to Sarah's College Football Saturday from Manhattan at Bill Snyder Family Stadium at 14 apiece, Kansas State and Kansas. Bill Land, Gary Reasons with you up top. We thought it would be even. It is. We'll take a look at some of the stats, Gary, but almost two different quarters because K-State seemed to control things in the first quarter, KU in the second. It really was, Bill. K 
K-State had the early opportunities there in the first quarter. They put points on the board. But Kansas, give them some credit. They came back in the second quarter. You take a look at the numbers of yards that they had in, in the second quarter and actually put two touchdowns on the board. The two good drives, and they ended the, with the last drive to get points on the board. So I know the Mark Mangino is probably proud of his football team and how they came back, and they want to continue in the second half. So more on, let's go down to Emily Jones with Coach Mangino. Guys, thank you. Coach Mangino, your team grabbed the momentum in the first half at the end there. How do you keep it in the second? Well, you know, we, we've got to go out and, and execute, make plays, protect the football on offense. Uh, we've got to get uh, contain the quarterback on, on the defensive side of the ball a little bit. Uh, you know, it's good to get a score just before the half, but uh, now, uh, you know, we, we've got to be able to carry that over in the second half. Coach Prince said coming into this game that he was concerned about smash mouth offensive line being able to uh, outpower his defensive line. Do you feel like you're wearing them down in that regard? Well, I, I don't know that. We've only played a half. I like the way our offensive line is playing. I think they're doing a good job. Uh, you know, we felt like it, the key to winning this game would be in the trenches. Coach, best of luck in the second half. We appreciate your time. Guys, send it back up to you. All right, thank you, Emily. And we're set for the kickoff as Patton is the deep man, and he takes it at the three-yard line for Kansas State. 15-20, final hole, and then upended at the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. Justin Springer making the tackle for the Kansas Jayhawks, a 20-yard pickup. Our first half stars today, Freeman's numbers. Can't get the ball to Nelson enough. No, no doubt. Get Jordy in the game. And Todd Reesing finished it very strong in the second quarter. And 5-5 five of five on that final drive. So, Kay, Kansas offense trying getting quick here in the second quarter. Now, interesting here, Ron Prince electing to take the football here to start the third quarter and with the wind at his back. So, he will, the Kansas State will not have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. That'll be for Kansas. So, they could have elected to go on defense to play the wind game for the fourth quarter. They're trying to go win the game right now. That's what he's telling his football team. And that's their fourth penalty today. They have twice this season had 16 penalties in a game. Last week they had just three, and it was a big part of winning in Austin against what was then the seventh-ranked team in the country, Texas. And Stuckey makes the tackle here on Jordy Nelson. Got a question for you. How do you beat Texas two years in a row like this team did and not be ranked ahead of them the next week in the ratings? Well, Texas has just been was ranked early in the season. That's what it was. You know, early in the season, the long ridiculous. Horns, you know, they have a preseason ranking, and those things are not necessarily accurate, and we all know that, yet it's too hard to move people up and down to beat a kind of where beat you a start. team soundly on their home field, and the next week somebody says, no, okay, this team's still better than them. I, I don't understand that. Here is Freeman, and incomplete is Murphy. He's covered on the play, and it'll be fourth and five, and a kicking situation for Kansas State. Sadiq Mohammed was covering on the play for KU. Disappointing there, Kansas State coming out. They knew that they thought they would come out and have a nice opening drive. Ron Prince's football team not executing very well. They're especially not on third down to get that completion. Pendleton, the deep man, a booming punt by Rayo. Pendleton gets away from it. Oh, a little dangerous there. That ball could have bounced anyway. And Kansas will get it on the 19-yard line for its first possession of the third quarter. A 52-yard punt. And out of Kansas, first of 10, out of the 41. A little bit better field position to work with. Continuing the drive here against the win. Takes the handoff to Sharp. Going deep again, and it is not caught. Oh, mama. Briscoe, he was thinking six as well as Garvin was beat on the play. Well, the ball was not, was not, it was kind of a wobbler coming out of the hands near side here. Take a look at the receiver going down the field, just going to work right down here to the middle, and he's definitely open, Bill. Ball's in his hands, and got to pull that ball in. Great throw that time by the quarterback, and take a look at his hands there, and he's got his left hand is turned the wrong way. You look at it there, watch his left hand. Well, you need to get that left hand flipped over where you're receiving the ball and not pushing it yeah. away from you. Almost like a defender with the left hand, a receiver with the right hand. Never seen that before, like that kind of a throw. It's just natural to get your hands open to receive the football. Well, it's second and 10 for the Jayhawks. And again, they go through the air. That one might have been tipped, but it is caught. And another first down at the 42-yard line. And Justin Rowland got his hand on at the linebacker and tipped it up there in fields. The recipient of that throw coming across the middle, watch number 51, the linebacker. He's going to come back and get his hand on the football right there. Goes over the top two of them, actually, and good job of concentrating on the throw there. And Fields comes up with the ball. So Kansas State needs its defense to bow up here. First and 10 at the 29 as the Jayhawks trying to take the lead for the first time today. 
Moved this nicely from their own 20-yard line on this drive with 7.08 and counting in the third quarter. Greasing, quick hitter, complete, should be a touchdown and will. Briscoe, TD, Kansas. Bill, perfect play call against a blitz. You're going to go with a quick screen to the outside, and that's exactly what happened here at K-State. Caught in a blitz situation where you bring the defense, you're going to put pressure on a quarterback, but guess what? If you don't have enough numbers in the secondary, you see all the pressure here is coming on the quarterback, and this is the guy who has to make the play, but he has to go outside and does not make the tackle in the zone. He gets clipped right there, and good job of running off the block and going for the score. Desmond Briscoe with a TD of 29 yards, and Webb, Tacks on the PAT, and Kansas has the lead for the first time today, 21-14 over Kansas State. Reesing and crew on top in the Sunflower Battle. Risco gets a breather after he gives Kansas the lead on the 29-yard TD reception. Big play for the big freshman from Dallas. Yeah, Todd Reesing just throws it out there, and he knows he's got to play here because of the Blitz. They defeat the Blitz, and Guy runs it all the way to the house. Good job of execution there. And as Briscoe making a nice run after the catch. Third touchdown of the season for Briscoe and Kansas with a 21-14 lead. And Webb will kick it off to Patton and James Johnson, the deep men for the Wildcats. Sun back out on a hot, windy afternoon here in Manhattan. Johnson around the eight. And brought down inside the 25-yard line, James Johnson. Derek Fine made the tackle. I don't think they've had a problem of getting up for this game. They just simply, Kansas survived, as you mentioned, that first quarter, and they've just kind of taken the momentum out of this one. Here's Murphy. See if they can take advantage of the penalty. He does and has a first down on the reception, and he's into Kansas territory to 49. And who's out front blocking? Well, take a look at number 27, Jordy Nelson out there. An unselfish guy. He'll catch the football for you. Get big enough body outside on the outside to make something happen there. And number 27, watch him get, get in the way. He tries to knock one off and goes for a second. Trying to get two blocks in one play. Jordy Nelson, number 27, doing a good job out there as well. So first and 10 for Kansas State. Here's Freeman. Over the middle, and it's complete. Going to the tight end, Mastrude. And Mastrude moves it all the way down to the 25-yard line before Justin Thornton tackles him, a 24-yard pickup. Well, really haven't done much down the field here until we get to this play here. Going to work the tight end down the middle of the field, and Jordy Nelson had a big catch earlier, but this is right between the safeties and the middle linebacker who's got to be responsible for number three, the third receiver in going down the middle of the field. Doesn't get there to him, so safeties are the only ones who can make that play. Nice throw by Josh Freeman. So Freeman connects with Mastrud. First and 10 at the 15 of the Jayhawks. And they come back for the end of round. To a 10, and not hard out of bounds to lead. Well, I like it when you get the, play hand, the ball in the hands of playmakers, and Tlaib is one of those. Watch him come around on the reverse here. Going to get him on the speed. And watch the quarterback, number one, Josh Freeman. Let's go ahead and grade him on his cut block. I don't think he's going to get his guy to the ground, but a pretty good effort there of trying to get on him. And good, good job on Tlaib coming off there and making the play. So it looks like Murphy might be able to go all the way. He picks up five with second and five at the 10. And now it's 2.18 to go in the third. Nelson goes wide left. Tailback is Johnson. He gets the football. Okay, he's up for the challenge this time. Yeah, you know, we talked about the wind in this football game, Bill, coming from the south to the north. It hasn't seemed to be as big a presence here in the third quarter, and uh, not a whole lot of difference out there, I think, throwing the football. But it's a little gusty at times. We're getting a little gusty here in the booth upstairs, but it's not a, I don't think it's a huge difference down on the field. I'm sure Emily Jones can give us a little more comment on that. Yeah, yeah, guys, you're exactly right. I think it's affecting you guys up there a whole lot more than it is down here. It's really kind of a non-issue, non and I don't think any of the passes are getting up high enough for the wind to affect it. It's only affecting the kicks. All right, Johnson lines up again. He's 9 of 37 on the carries today, and this one will be a loss on the play as he has stopped forward progress near the 14. James McClinton, big senior out of Garland, Texas, the Dallas area. Comes up with a tackle and come in with 20 tackles and five and a half for losses. He's so quick. Just watch what he does. He's able to get through two blockers here. They're trying to do the scoop block and get around him, and there's just no way to slow him down. And 
Good jab by the big fella going through there. Well, that'll bring on Brooks Rossman for the field goal attempt as he sets up for the 32-yarder. Bang one off the post earlier in the ball. Oh, I'm sorry, the 37, oh, yeah, 32. And it is good. So Rossman brings K-State a three-pointer and makes it a four-point game, 21-17. And again, remember that because you mentioned it all started with the, the uh, penalty. And now the Wildcats to kick it off here. Remember, Kansas State next week plays Colorado. Depending on what the Buffs do in Waco against Baylor and what happens here, you could have two unbeatens in conference play going at it again. Baylor happens to win. Kansas wins. They play one another next week. This Big 12 today is going to show us a lot, I think, of what to expect down the line with all these exciting matchups going. Perfect. Up to five. Into a swarm near the 16 yard line and is brought down there, and that's where Kansas will take over. You don't see many 6 3 wide receivers returning kicks, but, uh, but Herbert's the guy that's been very productive with his kick return so far this year for Kansas. 33 yards per average on the average of the kick return. Meyer, the backup quarterback, is a slot receiver now. Reesing gets the ball, gives it off to Nick Anderson. Nick Anderson pulls ahead and then dies. Uh, the 29-yard line, he's got a first down. And you've got to make tackles when you can as a linebacker. Reggie Walker is going to be right up in here, and he has a chance. He's running through. Nobody touches him, and he can't get Nick Anderson down. Good job of making him miss by the running back. But as a linebacker, you step up there in a 3-4 defense, and you come through, you've got to make plays. And Nick Anderson doing a good job running the football. Nick Anderson averaging 6.3 a game, 8 or per carry, and 81.8 per game, 8 for the Big 12 coming in. First and 10 at the 29, Meyer still in the slot, right back to McAnderson though, and he finds a big hole and breaks it all the way out across the 45-yard line where Marcus Watts stops it. You know, not a, a lot of people ask why you don't play more of a 3-4 defense in college football. Well, here's the reason. If you stop it right there, you can see the holes in the lanes that actually have a natural cutback lane there if the defensive line, the outside linebacker goes up the field and the defensive end gets turned. So that's what happens. If you don't fit on blocks and fit well with your inside linebackers with a 3-4 defense, you're going to have those gaping running holes and McAnderson take advantage of it there. It's McAnderson now six carries, 59 yards as the third quarter winds down, and that'll be the end of the third. And Kansas moving the ball with the lead as we enter the fourth quarter. 21-17, Jayhawks over the Wildcats here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium in Manhattan. Welcome back, folks. Fourth quarter, ready to get underway. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones with you. Kansas with the football, and the Jayhawks with the lead, 21-17. And sophomore quarterback Todd Reeson on a first and 10, and knocked away. And Ian Campbell gets his hands up there, rushing off the left side. The defensive end going around the edge. Good job of knocking the ball away. And timing his leap there as the quarterback throws the football. Watch on the right side of your screen. You'll see him come off the block and get his hands up. When you do a quick 90 pass, they're always asking the offensive tackle to do the cut blocks and get those defensive linemen down. Good job by uh, Ian Campbell getting off the block and knocking the ball away. Reesing 17 of 27 today, 186 yards, two intercepted, two touchdown passes. He set a new KU season record for a sophomore TD pass to throw. McAnderson upended, but he'll move the chains as he romps to the 42-yard line, and Garvin makes the tackle, a 13-yard pickup for Brandon McAnderson. Third and four at the 19. Reesing. McAnderson in trouble. Turns it upfield and did not get the first down. Now when Reggie Walker, well, Reggie Walker, number 53 for the Wildcats, watches this tape, the thing that he's going to notice is he's missing tackles. Missing, ta missing tackles at the point of attack. Watch number 53, the linebacker, have a chance to make a tackle right there. Bingo. And just misses him. That's two or three that I've seen at the point of attack right now for Reggie Walker. Not having a good day tackling. It's kind of rampant with the, with the Wildcats right now. And they're going for it. Fourth and one at the 16-yard line. Out of the shotgun. The pitch to Sharp. Did not get it. Did not get the first down. And Kansas State will take over on downs. Justin Rowland and Ian Campbell break through to stop Jake Sharp. 
as Mark Mangino rolls the dice a little bit here. Yeah, nice great technique by Justin Wall and the linebacker coming off the outside. Watch him come up here and get to the outside, get in the backfield, get off the block, and then Ian Campbell there for the cutback. So, excellent job. Watch the top of the screen, the linebacker scraping outside and got a pressure on the quarterback. Everything is played exceptionally well here by Kansas State to stop Kansas to convert on that fourth down. And KU basically turning down a a chip shot for a kicker like Webb to go up seven to say, hey, we want the touchdown. And now Kansas State gets it on their 17-yard line. And this one is complete to Murphy from Freeman. And a couple. Almost a miscue there because I don't think that the quarterback was quite ready for it. He's down his center. I'm going on two. I didn't go on one. I'm going on two on that one. Trevor Veers, the center. Watch me. Snaps the ball, and Josh... He's just not quite ready with the football. Hit him right in hand. It's a perfect snap. That's why he was able to take care of it. But if it had been a little off his body, it could have been a huge, huge mistake for, Wild, for the Wildcats. It would have been disastrous. Deep in their territory. Second and eight now at the 19 after that fortunate two-yard pickup. Johnson makes the backfield empty as he moves up. And this one is complete. And Nelson, I believe, boy, he has popped at the 20. Picked up a yard and no more. He's at you had Mortensen inside. Good job coming inside and making a tackle on him. And see the screen going to come from the outside. And bingo, right there. Number eight puts his hat right between the numbers. And that will bring up a third down and seven. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. K-State O. Big play here. Third and seven for the Wildcats. Freeman got some time. Now hit, complete. Murphy nearly dropped it, but hangs on at the 31. And it's a first down for Kansas State as Harris makes the tackle. A freshman from Bixby, Oklahoma, for Kansas. Good job of picking up here. You see the fullback come in there and make the block on Morton's and he's rushing as a linebacker. Good job of picking it up, allowing the quarterback enough time to throw the ball outside to Dez. And excuse me, Deion Murphy catching that football. So. That's a nice pocket there for the quarterback to step up and throw to and make sure he didn't move the chain. Ten-yard pickup. First and ten Wildcats. Pat, he finds a little crease. Scoots to near the 35. McClinton, the tackler. No sense of urgency here for Kansas State. Don't need to really just kind of play your game. Play it in the trenches and win running the ball, passing the ball like they're doing here, blending things with Josh Freeman. And I saw early in the first half, Bill, that I think he's he's pretty accurate rolling out. That's an option for them to get him outside of the pocket to help in the passing game. Second and six at the 34. Freeman low snap, fumbled it, picks it right back up. Oh my goodness, Gonzalez couldn't handle it. It was nearly picked off. It would have been a touchdown the other way. Tlaib, I believe, was the defender, and he knows what the end zone's all about. <laughs> uh, wow, I'm really oh, surprised here that Akeem Tlaib does not make this play. And Josh Freeman, you know, trying to make something happen there. You got to be careful in these situations. And got a big, strong arm, and Tlaib underneath there, and Gonzalez almost comes back with the rebound. A lot of, a lot of action going on on that play. Was the keep to leave already has a TD reception today, his fourth of the year, fourth TD of the year. And here's Kansas State now another big third down, third and six. Wildcats go across the middle and it is complete. And we'll see where they spot as Kuski, the receiver, to leave the tackler. Going to be short here, just short of the 40 yard line. They need to get it across that to about the. 40 and a half yard line here, and you're going to see the tight end come across underneath 82. He's the, the third receiver out to this side, and to leave right there on the tackle. And let's see the spot. The spot's a good spot, I believe, right there, about a foot shy yeah. of the 40 yard line. Fans, of course, always want to go <laughs> for it. <laughs> so there's 9.15 to go, and they show punt with Rayer and Briscoe, who's the deep man. Funky, straight kicking it away, away and a good kick it is. And KU saying they called fair catch. There was contact afterwards. Either side happy with that one. Whatever, it's going to be Kansas football inside the 15. We come back.
Welcome back to Manhattan. A couple of youngsters have joined it, even though their team's on the short side, 21-17. Our Keystone Light, always smooth moment. How about Johnson's run here with a little help from his friends? Uh, you bet. <laughs> always smooth here, getting more after you're supposed to be down, and nobody making the tackle, and then he finishes it off here. Good job of continuing the drive by the Wildcats and getting a score early in the ballgame. Yeah, that set up Patton for the next play on a six-yard TD run. Now it's Kansas State on the short side, though. 21-17, Kansas with the football, first and 10, and the 14-yard line, lead of four, and 8.57 remaining. And Reese bounced right off of the offensive player, intercepted Kansas State. And the Wildcats get the pick, and that went right off the fields, and Carney gets his second interception of the day. Right through Fields' hands, it hit him in the helmet, and bingo, right up in the air. And I'll tell you, Johnny on the spot here, Carney makes another interception. Watch here as the quarterback throws it out. There should be an easy completion. Goes right through his hands, hits him right in the helmet, right in the crown of the helmet, and goes up in the air. And K-State is set up with perfect field position to the 16-yard line. Well, that is the thing. When you throw it out there in the flat, some crazy things can happen if things don't handle, aren't handled properly. And Kansas State, a golden opportunity to regain the lead. Freeman across the middle, and Nelson, of all people, couldn't come up with the handle. Yeah, kind of a hot ball coming out of Josh Freeman's hand there. And a little bit ahead of Jordy Nelson, who's a really sure-handed receiver, no doubt about that. He could only get one hand on it, though, and wasn't able to pull it in. It'll be second and ten. You know, interceptions early in the ball game for Kansas State that they had defensively that offense was not able to convert on those. But now with great field position here inside the 20 yard line of, of Kansas, Kansas State needs to come away with points here, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. Obviously, a touchdown gets them in the lead back in the lead in this ball game. Second and ten. Freeman across the middle this time, and it is complete at the 11 yard line as. Mastrude and Tlaib tackles him. A five-yard pickup and a huge third down coming up. Well, Jordy Nelson is actually open this play. He's going to be here. He's going to work here. Watch him work the slip back corner of the end zone, but Josh Freeman chooses not to throw him the football, and I would throw this ball out there because there's a lot of space out here where he's the only one that can catch it, and that's a play that you need to make with your best receiver. All right, Kansas State, third and five at the 11, down four. Nelson and Murphy go wide left. Kuski in motion. Empty backfield. Oh, they give to Johnson, and now the flag is thrown and whistles blowing. Another big break, though, Gary. The penalties against Kansas. In a play to their favor, no doubt. But you know, on third and six, there's been a lot of you know conservative play calling, I believe, by Kansas State in this football game. Ed Warner, the offensive coordinator, who's up in the booth and calling the game here for the Wildcats, not to necessarily being very risky with his offense, being pretty conservative and different situations here in this ball game. Okay. Let's see what they come up with here. A little different deal. Third and inches. Freeman just did get it. Came off that initial surge and then popped to the right. Mortensen and Holt were there to stop him. Marking it inside the, the six yard line here. Josh Freeman coming around the edge. It looks like he's going to slide off and be able to go and then watch his hit. Bingo. James Holt, the linebacker, making the hit on him here, number 12, finally, and knocking him back. First and goal in the five, six yard line. Yeah, so now they come back with Patton in the backfield. First and goal, 21 17, Kansas. The Jayhawks trying to dodge another turnover bullet here. They've been successful a couple of times today, but K State, first and goal from the five. And the pass, and it's complete. Touchdown! Patton throwing the TD pass to Murphy. Leon Patton with the TD pass. And Stuckey trying to defend, and Murphy gets the score. Well executed play there. He just pulls it up and throws the football. And Probably haven't seen anything like that from him this season, so not covered well at all by the Kansas uh, defense. Lots to hold. The kick is up and good. 
Rossman knocks it through, and Kansas State has regained the lead 24 21. Back in the little apple of Manhattan, Kansas, the place is rocking a Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones with you. Kansas State's regained the lead 24 21. Yeah, important kickoff return here. Kansas come into this football game number one of the country in kickoff return, so probably Marcus Herbert going to get the ball in his hands again with a chance to. Give his team great field position here, perhaps with the drive to go ahead. K State's caves on the average 19 and a half yards per return today. This one a short kick and is brought to the 37, 38 yard line. So decent field position, all kinds of time with 725 to go. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, these Wildcats may very well be drawing on an interesting training session that happened in the dead of winter back in January. Ron Prince took his team down the road to Fort Riley, where his dad was actually stationed. They worked out with the uh, 28th Infantry Division of the Army, went through some grueling, grueling training, a three-mile hike, an obstacle course. Well, about a month later, that unit got deployed to Iraq, and they have actually lost three of members of that unit. They do draw on the experiences that they had that day. And in fact, uh, Ian Campbell wears a Black Lions patch. And they don't just hand those things out. Those are usually reserved for people at West Point, for West Point players. So it was a huge honor for that team to get to work out, uh, give them for some perspective, and also build some great relationships. And you know how Ron Prince uh, values those military ties that run in his family. Yeah, great story. And they're also always thinking about giving back to the community and, uh, and proud of the area in which they live up in here. Kansas comes back and goes right to fields and sets them up for like 20 plus yards and it's first attempt of 39 of K-State now. And another completion, this one across the middle to Derek Fine at the 30 yard line. And the Jayhawks are already knocking on the door. Watts made the tackle, but he got nine yards. You know, early in this ball game, Kansas was kind of clicking away, clicking away in the first quarter. Bill had some misdues that really weren't playing up to speed. And I think since the second quarter on, Kansas has really picked up their level of play. They have matched the intensity for Kansas State. And really in the second quarter, they won that intensity. And here late in the game, they were making these plays after being, after, uh, you know, ha having to answer Kansas State kicking, uh, excuse me, putting the points on the board. They've really turned the momentum back to their side. K-State holding on to a three-point lead. Kansas trying to answer quickly, though. Five slips and falls. And incomplete. So it'll be third and less than a yard, it appears. You now, if you did ever want to get a first down, this is it for Kansas, because you think with this great field position, this time of the ball game, you get six and a half minutes to go in the football game. You want to get a first down, and you want to put points on the board, get a touchdown up there to, to gain the lead. Now, they obviously could, could tie this football game with a field goal. And they definitely would be in range if they were to choose to go for it on fourth. But here in the shotgun formation, possibly going to hand that ball off to McAnderson, who's there tailback line up next to recent. McAnderson's been a ton today. Seven carries, 62 yards. They're going to throw it. The quick hitter across the middle. It is complete. Kansas scores. Touchdown. Dexton Fields. And the Hawks are on top. Just like that. KU answers with 6.27 to go on a 30-yard TD strike. Yeah, I'm just going to go right up the middle of the field here, and I'll tell you, this young man has done a good job catching the football and missed tackles. We've talked about K-State missing tackles, and that certainly happened there at the end of that play. And He's a big receiver, Bill. He's hard to get down on the ground. and Excellent job of catching the football at 6 foot 200 pounds and making a play. And now going for two on the missed play, and incomplete. So they get six, and it's... Kansas 27-24. Wow. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We see Fields and that receiving core, Henry and crew, Reesing, happy to get the touchdown. But here's the extra point attempt as Tucker, the punter, is the holder. The snap looked good, Gary, and then Scott Webb left with just well, I try to throw it up for grabs, the kicker, and uh, that may end up being huge. Yeah, the importance there is they're now only up by three instead of a four, which would mean a touchdown for K-State. They have to get up on the board, and now they could tie this football game at least with a, with a field goal. Kansas with a lead of three, 27-24. Webb booting that one out of the end zone. 5-21, 5-20, 5-19. It's a huge third down and nine at the 21-yard line. Kansas State on the short side by three. 
Josh Freeman, the quarterback. Plenty of time. Watch out, picked off, and KU has gotten the INT again as the Jayhawks get it on the pick and will have it around the 26-yard line. Kendrick Harper comes up with the interception, 5'9", 190, a junior. Only a three-man rush here. Then you have some linebackers stepping up, can't take care of everybody. It's a man coverage technique out there, and it's got two deep, two deep man coverage, and just the ball is underthrown here. Harper coming up with the interception there on the outside and just a ball that's poorly thrown and receiver really wasn't open. But good coverage in the secondary that time by Kansas overall and a big turning point in this ball game. So the Jayhawks get it back first and 10 at the 26. Nick Anderson. Stop near the 24 yard line, a pickup of two. And Roland making the tackle. And Ron Francis now has to have his defense make a play. They've got to answer here. They've got to come back and stop this KU offense and slow them down. That was a decent play on first down. And they've got to get an answer here. They've got to make a play. Got to get the ball back in the hands of their offense. If they're going to do anything here, it looks like Kansas will at least have a field goal attempt here. If they don't get a first down, continue to move this ball. Second and nine. Well, this is similar to what happened at the end of the first half. When KU had a short field to score a touchdown with 11 seconds to go and tie it up before the mission at 14. Reese keeping all the way, turning it upfield. Thus through to inside the 15-yard line. He fumbled the football. They're saying he was down, but blew the whistle. Reese brought down by Hulick. Good job of running the option here, not electing the pitch, and we'll see the contact here at the end of the play. And Good job by the offensive executing that ball is caused by the ground. Good job by the officials making that call. Ten yard pickup. First and ten for Kansas. They've got 20 seconds on the play clock. I'd be surprised if he's going to snap that ball very quickly. You need to use as much clock as possible. You're heading this football game and 14, 12, counting it down. Now regardless of what you end up getting out of this, a TD or a field goal attempt. And uh, keep it on the ground here to McAnderson as Stephen Klein, senior from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, making the tackle from the nose tackle spot of the lap page. Yeah, Ron Prince has got to be thinking here, what do I start using my timeouts? And hit three and a half minutes to go left in this football game, and got to be concerned about the clock. Got to have time to operate with your offense when they get back out there, perhaps. And first and foremost, they've got to stop KU. Yeah, they don't get a touchdown stop here. Of course, the field goal, you have to think it's quick as the way they've been operating offensively today. McAnderson busts through, gets down near the seven yard line as Moses Manu makes the stop for the Cats. Well, when you play a 3 4 defense, everybody has to fit on the play defense. You see the linebacker, he's overrunning. He should be backside, and he's the one that runs there. Hulik ran, ran himself out of the play, and McAnderson does a good job of cutting it back. And so, guys not fitting where they're supposed to in the scheme of the defense is what's causing the holes in the running game against Kansas State. So Kansas now facing a third and three at the seven. And leading it by three. Reesing out of the shotgun. He's got Fine and Briscoe wide to the right side, and they'll call a timeout here. And his play, clock, play is clock go down, and you yeah. don't want the penalty and talk it over. Obviously a huge play call coming up here for Mark Mangino and the Jayhawks. This is a key third down here for Kansas State. If they stop Kansas now, then you would think Kansas is going to attempt a field goal and perhaps go up six points in his ball game, leading the game 27-24 by a three-point margin now. So you got then Kansas State, you got two minutes plus and change on all three timeouts to operate with. That's not so forbidding, but they get the first down. Yeah, Even would, if they don't, then they got three downs to waste to kill your timeouts, and then they kick a chip shot field goal, and you got to have a touchdown to beat them. If Kansas keeps it on the ground here, and K-State stops them short of a first down, I would think that Ron Prince has to use a timeout here to reserve as much time on the yeah. clock. But it's a wide-open formation here, a spread offense, and racing back in the gun, and got McAnderson out there as well. And yeah, watch out, it keeps Tlaib is back in the lineup. He is uh, on the left side. They lob it in the end zone for Fine. He couldn't hang on. Oh, my goodness. Derek Fine, I don't know if he glanced for a moment to see how close he was to the boundary, but that was an easy six. And Derek Fine is just lined up on the inside. It's the number three receiver in there, and 
Right there to him. You got to catch that football and wow. Oh, Kansas is going mercy. <laughs> that puts you two scores up. So instead, Scott Webb will come on for the field goal attempt. Now Tucker is the holder. And the 24 yard. And it is good. So he connects on the field goal. It's a six point game. 30 24, Kansas, 2.21 to go. Here we go. We're down to gut-wrenching period of the game. 2.21 remaining. Kansas to kick it off with a six-point lead. Scott Webb to Kansas State's Patton or James Johnson. And bring it out. No. Took his time, Patton did. And he'll down it, and Kansas State will have two minutes, 21 seconds to work with. All to, three timeouts yep. remaining for him, too. So they can work the clock as much as they need to. And but uh, James Franklin, the offensive coordinator, has got to find some, some plays that work here. And you know what? It's strange. I think sometimes offenses, when they go to their no huddle and their hurry up offense at the end of, end of a ball game, they're a lot more efficient. And the reason being is that the defense kind of just lays back and plays in, in zone coverage. And they'll allow, you to catch you think big. Exactly. they'll allow you to catch balls up in front of you. You notice you see how Kansas approaches this. Whether they bring pressure on the quarterback or play back, lay back and play zone defense. Wildcats first and 10 from the 20. And this to Gonzalez, just what you're talking about. They keep it in front of you. Well, you just gave him 14 yards and let him stop the clock. Well, they actually rushed six on that play, so but they had four deep coverage that time, so they're keeping everybody in front. The pressure did not get there. You take a look at the linebackers rushing here on the inside. You're going to bring some pressure inside there, but these four umbrella coverage for some people back here keeping everything in front of them. Harris made the stop there for KU. It only took six seconds, so 2.15 to go. First to 10 of the 34 now. Gonzalez will go wide left. Murphy to the right. And they come again to this side now, and Murphy makes the sliding grab to leave covering. Pickup of seven. Calls him out of bounds. Looked to me yeah. like he slid inbounds here when he caught this football. I'm surprised that the line judge is right there on the sideline. And is he inbounds? Kent, where he's down? He's down. The ball clock should be running still. We got a break there. Yeah, they got a little break. So 2.09 to go. Second down and three at the 41. Gonzalez to the left. Murphy to the right. Nelson in the slot there on the right side. Freeman out of the shotgun. And again, Gonzalez. And he's got a first down near midfield at the 49-yard line of Kansas State before Harris knocks him out of bounds. You know, but these are long throws that Josh Freeman are making. Watch how far he throws his football all the way from here, all the way across the field. Guys, that's about 35 yards he's throwing the ball, and those are not easy throws to make. And the defense tightens up on him. Don't be surprised if one of those defensive backs tries to undercut one of those long out passes and set ball down and perhaps goes for an interception. Yeah, you get your timing down on the defensive side here, and it might be a pick six. So first to 10 at the 49, clock moving out, 154 to go. Wildcats down six. Freeman finds Patton and incomplete. And smart for them that it was. Well, you're using the outside of the field on the previous passes. And you know, you've got you can use the whole field. You've got your full timeout complement left. You got three of them. So Josh Freeman doesn't need to be in any particular hurry or really have to throw the ball to the sideline thinking you have to get the ball out of bounds. Talked about defenses playing a little soft in the, in the two-minute area here. And kind of happening here with Kansas. The ball's being able to be thrown complete in front of him. Freeman today, 30 of 45 for 303 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions. Second and 10. And this one complete to Johnson. And he is hauled down inbounds, picked up a yard or two. Stuckey makes the play. K-State will hurry up. Again, they have three timeouts remaining. Third and eight at the 49 of Kansas now. The most important thing is they've got to get a first down here. Don't want to go all the way to fourth down and not get a first down if you're K-State. Freeman, pass knocked away, intended for Nelson. Heck of a defensive play by Justin Thornton, the safety. You know, Justin Thornton does a nice job of coming in there on Jordy Nelson and knocking that ball away. It hit him right in the numbers, but the contact there in the hand, the strip, I think, is what didn't allow him to catch that football. Left contact, oh. he pulls the left arm. Ball a little bit behind him, I think, Bill. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that seeing it live, but there would have been a sensational catch by 
Fourth yes. and eight now, so this is a critical down here. They've got to get this first down and keep going. 119 to go for the Wildcats. 30-24, Kansas the leader, and a fourth and eight. Freeman in trouble, and it is picked off by Kansas. That is, once again, Akib Talib with the INT. And Kansas will get the ball back with 112 remaining. Well, not a mistake by Josh Freeman because he's got pressure in his face. Not a good job of picking up the rushers that time from Kansas coming in there. Kansas State allowing pressure to go on the quarterback and a nice play by Tlaib on the outside, being there ready to catch that football. But all he's doing is coveraging. Take a look at the quarterback here and the pressure that he gets inside. And that's just a jailbreak there. And Josh Freeman just trying to make a play before he gets contacted to go down and throwing the ball out there to one of his receivers. And, Unable to get there because of the good coverage by Tlaib. The all-conference pick, an All-American candidate, Akib Tlaib, who scored a touchdown today, comes up what KU fans got to figure is a game-ending type interception. Kansas State will have three timeouts here. They'll use them all, obviously, as Kansas is going to keep the ball on the ground. And McAnderson just hovering over it as he carries forward for a few yards. And timeout Kansas State with 107 to go. Second and 12, a minute to go, and Kansas State out of timeouts, and the snap, and all they can do is watch at this point as the Kansas Jayhawks will run it to 5-0. and oh. And they were receiving votes in the polls this week. Does defeating Kansas State in Manhattan give them enough to move into the top 25. Well, you'd have to think that at 5-0, and that's going to open some eyeballs across the country to say, hey, Kansas State didn't have great competition the first four weeks of the season, but a Big 12 team that defeated Texas a week ago, beat them on their home turf in Kansas State. Huge win for Kansas, and, Bill, I think they're going to jump into the top 25. Tell you what, it was an impressive performance by the University of Kansas, and Mark Mangino hugs all the way around as the Jayhawks win it 30-24. to over their rival Kansas State in this, the 105th meeting in the Sunflower Showdown. Reesing, three TD passes today. He was outstanding. And Kansas, a 30-24 winner to drop the Wildcats to 3-2. and two. The Jayhawks now go to 5-0 and oh and will host the Baylor Bears in Big 12 play next week. Gary, Re well, let's send it down to Emily Jones here for just a second. Emily? All right, guys, thanks so much here with Kansas head coach Mark Mangino. Coach, some people had some criticisms of your non-conference schedule. Able to make a statement today. What kind of statement do you make? Well, it's better to win at home in a non-conference schedule than go on the road and lose. We're about building a program, and uh, our players know what's best for them. I know what's best for them, and uh, I think the critics are now silent. Akeem Tlaib had an incredible game once again. Just talk about his versatility. He's one of the best players in America. He's a leader. He makes plays on both sides of the ball. And um, he's a tremendous player for us, and our, our kids respect him greatly. Offensively, your line was able to dominate, and your backfield tandem was incredible. Uh, the offensive line and running backs played very well. The wide receiver, the receivers, I don't like the way they played. We dropped too many balls. We left too many points on the scoreboard today. We'll get that fixed tomorrow. All right, Coach Mangino, you are 5-0. and Congratulations. Thank you. We do appreciate it. Guys, send it back up to you. Silence. What a victory for Kansas. An exciting win here, and they certainly made a bit of a statement. They certainly did. They did a good job. Second, third, and fourth quarter, they won the football game. Well, for Gary Reasons, Emily Jones, and our entire crew, Bill Land here saying so long from the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas. 